Hello everyone and welcome to Evolve, a machine learning community for machine learning enthusiasts. Now today we will be learning about MLP classifier, also known as multi-layer perceptron. So it is a type of artificial neural network that is commonly used as a classifier in machine learning. To understand MLP, let's imagine a group of friends working together to solve a problem. In a MLP classifier, the friends are rep uh, represented by artificial neurons. Each neuron takes inputs, performs some calculations, produces an output. The friends pass messages to each other, helping to make a final decision. The MLP consists of multiple layers of these artificial neurons. The first layer is the input layer, which takes in the initial data or features. The last layer is the output layer, which provides the final prediction or classification. In between the input and output layers, there are one or more different layers. These hidden layers are responsible for processing the information and learning the pattern in the data. Each neuron is a hidden in the hidden layer receives input from previous layer and sends its output to, output to the next layer. Now uh, we'll see this diagram. Now here, each artificial neuron uh, in this MLP has weights associated with its output. These weights determine the importance of each input in making predictions. The neuron calculated the neuron calculates a weighted sum of its inputs, applies an activation function, and produces an output. During training, the MLP adjusts these weights to minimize the differences between the predictions and actual targets. This process is called backpropagation. It involves propagating the errors backward through the networking, updating the weights to improve the accuracy of future predictions. Once the MLP is trained, it can make predictions on new unseen data. It passes the inputs to the network with the weight adjusted during the training and produces an output in the form of class uh, pro probabilities or specific class labels. MLP classifiers are powerful because they can learn complex patterns in data. They can handle both linear and non-linear relationship between the input features and uh, the target variables. However, choosing the number of hidden layers, the number of uh, neurons in each layer and activation function can influence the performance of MLP. Okay, now moving to the practical part. Okay, so now first uh, we will start by importing the Pandai celebrity and uh, we will uh, read the data set using the read csv function and we will get all the data information using the info info function then uh, we will assign all the uh, columns that we have to take from the user and store it in features variable and the prediction class will be store uh, predicting uh, column will be stored in prediction class variable so uh, and uh, their values will be stored in x and uh, for the features and uh, for prediction class the values will be stored in y x will have all the data that uh, our user will give us as the input and y that it will get from it will get as output from the machine learning model now uh, this is the training and testing part here we have uh, here we have to train here we have to split the uh, data into training and testing part so uh, here we have assigned test size as uh, 0.30 which is an ideal as we have already discussed in uh, our earlier videos that the testing part should always be less and training part should always be more. So here the training and testing part is divided into the ratio of 7 is to 3 that is 70% is the training part and 30% is the training part. More uh, the uh, model will be trained uh, more accurately it will predict the results. Okay, so now here we will check uh, the uh, shapes of the data to uh, check if the train test, uh, test split has done its work correctly or not. Okay, now we have reached uh, to the model classification part. So we will import MLP classifier from sklearn.neural uh, neural network library. Now uh, we will uh, assign this model to a classifier. Now we will fit the classifier with the x uh, with the training data that is x train and y train, and we will uh, make predictions on uh, on x test values using this classifier and store it in the y print variable. Now. Uh, uh, we will import metrics from sklearn and using the accuracy score from metrics we will uh, use ytest and ypred to predict 
predict on the data on the on this data set now uh, for every time uh, for every y test and y period value being same the accuracy will increase and for every uh, non similar values the accuracy will decrease so for, uh, we can see that uh, we, uh, this uh, model has returned 100% accuracy which may be a result for uh, overfitting we will check that uh, we will check this in the visual studios Okay, now so we have come to our uh, Visual Studio. So now I'll just quickly give it a run. Run all. Now, uh, as always, we will start by importing the pandas library and using the read CSV function, I'll uh, read the dataset iris dataset.csv. Now, from info, I'll take all the information of the dataset that is, what, how many columns are there, how many column has null values or not, uh, and what is what are their data types, what is the memory usage. Now, uh, we, I will assign two variables, uh, feature and prediction class. Now, as I have told earlier that I have uh, discussed it with another method that I have discussed in my earlier video. So, if you want to know that method, uh, that method is more uh, efficient. So, you can just check out my previous videos. Now, uh, their values I will uh, store in X and Y. That is, features value will be stored in X and the prediction class value will be stored in Y. I think by now, uh, you may all have been uh, familiar with this concept. So, I'll just be skipping it. Uh, this training and testing part 1. That uh, Just, I'll uh, explain it in one line. That uh, train test split splits the data on X and Y into a ratio, into a, uh, ratio that we uh, define here and uh, the training and we then uh, print the testing and training part to, uh, to just check that uh, it is not necessary you just have to if you want to you can do like if you want to check if the training and testing split has been done properly or not now from sklearn.neural network we will import mlp classifier now mlp classifier is not uh, only a machine learning uh, model it is also a deep learning model so uh, SKLearn has a library of uh, neural networks that is a deep uh, deep learning library. So uh, here some modifications are done on MLP to use it as a classification uh, uh, classification model. Now uh, MLP uh, we will store it in classifier variable and fit this uh, model with training part. Now uh, we will predict on X test uh, using the model and store the uh, store the data in Y variable. Now from sklearn we will import metrics and uh, for using the accuracy score we will predict the accuracy on y test and y print uh, that uh, we can see that the accuracy here we have achieved is 97.77 which is among the best ones we have received uh, till now and uh, we are just excluding the ones where we have got 100 because uh, uh, 100 is the least possible uh, accuracy we can achieve anytime. But uh, since this is Iris data set, very refined data, so it is a possibility that you can uh, get 100% though we will exclude it for now. So uh, this was it. Now we will be moving to the conclusion part. Okay, so we have reached the conclusion uh, part of this, uh, of this video. So the MLP or multi-layer perceptron classifier is a type of artificial neural network com uh, commonly used for various classification tasks. It is known for its ability to learn complex patterns and handle non-linear relationship in the data. The advantage of MLP includes, include its flexibility in handling different types of data and its ability to approximate any non-linear function given enough training data uh, and appropriate network architecture. MLP classifier can also handle high dimensional data and are capable of feature uh, learning through hidden layers. However, MLP can be sensitive to choice of hyperparameters and require careful tuning to prevent overfitting. Training MLPs can be commonly in uh, intensive, especially for large networks or dataset. Additionally, MLPs are often considered as black box model, making it challenging to interpret the reason behind their prediction. Okay, so this was it uh, for the video. I hope you I hope you enjoyed. So uh, thank you and happy learning.